It will destroy you too. One day, Michael. This rage. Which drives you. You think if you kill them all, it will go away? It won't. What's going on folks and welcome to another Reputized video. Halloween 5 The Revenge of Michael Myers takes place one year later after the events of the fourth one as Michael Myers continues to try and kill his now mute niece, Jamie. Starring Donald Pleasance and Danielle Harris, this movie takes place right after the events of the fourth one. There's a time jump. The beginning starts off with Michael on top of that car and Rachel and Jamie trying to survive that same night. It's just kind of like how the second one began to exactly where the first one left off. So, but there's like a time jump stamp. So like the first five minutes of this, then you jump to a year later, and then that's when the movie starts. It was a good, interesting sequel, but the cons are, there are a little more than the last ones. But I'll get to those later. Casting of Donald Pleasance, is, as always, was a real good idea. Donald Pleasance, he played that character down to the bone, especially in this one. The role of Loomis. Next to Michael Myers, he's one of those iconic characters that you just, you just have to love. Danielle Harris, they made her mute in this, which I don't really agree with. Charles Titoni and Jerry Brady's editing was, was pretty good. The lighting and cinematography work done by Robert Draper did a pretty good job. It, it wasn't as dark as the last one. This one felt more like a Friday the 13th film, mainly because there's a barn scene in it. For those of you who watched it, you'll know what I'm talking about. There's a barnyard scene, and those occur a lot in the Friday the 13th series. That's not a bad thing. It was still good, especially in that scene that made it a little dark. But compared to the last movie, Halloween 4 was really dark. But it, it just it wasn't that dark for this one to me anyway. Directed by Dominic Anthony Gerard. He took it in a, in a pretty okay direction. The writing by Michael Jacobs, Dominic Anthony Gerard, and Shim Bitterman was okay. They decided to take it in a way that wasn't shown before. And what I mean by that is there's this whole thing where Michael has a symbol on his hand, which you'll actually get to find out what that is in the, in the next movie, which I won't get into in this, obviously, but... It, it, it was it was okay. It's a control thing for Michael, but that's all I'll say. The music by Alan Howarth, as always, was pretty good. It was dark, and uh, John Carpenter's score, as always, that that score has just become an icon to this day. I love it. There's maybe one pro in this, which is shameful to say, but the mask was better. You know, I said in my last review that the mask for Part Four was cheesy and it wasn't good. This one they actually improved. It shows Michael being nursed to health at the, at the beginning of this movie. The guy obviously saved his mask but it looked better. You can tell it was a different mask but I think they were trying to play it off as it being the same mask. I don't know. But it did look different and it looked better too. Don Shanks who plays Michael in this, I thought he did a much better job than George P. Wilbur, who played him in the last one. Don Shanks had a more muscular fit to him, kind of like how Kane Hodder did for Jason. And the cons. I always hate talking about the cons, because I always want to rank a movie the best I can. But I got to talk about the cons. Tina, played by Wendy Kaplan. I just could not get into her character. She was so freaking annoying. It's just, I, I couldn't get into her character. Every time she would speak, it, it do nothing for me. I could care less about this character. She was just that annoying. Plus, there's these two cops in there that was trying to be, I don't know, I guess the Three Stooges, because every time they would show up, there's this really stupid noise that they would make with the score in the background. Or, what the hell was that about? I really didn't get it. <laughs> Plus the way they handled Rachel's character after her surviving and being the the scream queen pretty much for Halloween 4. The way they treated her character in this 
Oh man, it, they, they couldn't. Yeah, that was just an insult. And I'm surprised Ellie Cornell came back to do that. Just for her to be treated the way she did. It, it was an insult. I just, I didn't care for that at all. But all in all, this movie wasn't bad. It wasn't garbage. It was, it was a good sequel for what it was for a franchise that is just so popular with people. It wasn't bad completely. But in the end, I'm giving Halloween 5 a B minus. Stay tuned for my review for Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, and also Hellfest, which opened up today in theaters everywhere. I might be doing the Hellfest review first, just so I can get that out. I'm still planning on doing the rest of the Halloween movies on up to the new one coming out next month. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I, I really do appreciate for those who watched. Like, subscribe, get reputized, share this video. Peace to rip out.